in this video we're going to talk about the concept of significant figures and also a few measurement techniques that we're going to use throughout the year. Uh, so what I want you to do first is look at this measurement here uh, with the ruler and think about how you would record the, the length of this black line using this ruler here. So what, try and come up with a value that you think if you were, if you were measuring this you would record that value uh, as your measurement. All right, so pause the video real quick and then come back and we'll talk about this. All right, so uh, when we're measuring in science, it's important to know whether we're using an analog or a digital measurement. So the easiest way to remember the difference between analog and digital is with clocks. So an analog clock would be one of those clocks that has the hands that move around the face of the clock. Right? Whereas a digital clock would be one of those ones that says like 1, 20, Five. One of these would be digital clock, right? So, uh, digital is giving you a readout of exactly what uh, the measurement is, whereas an analog clock, uh, it's it's moving. Uh, you see, you'll see uh, in between some tick marks. Uh, this is a manual movement instead of uh, using a, a digital readout like this. Okay, so when we're using an analog measurement we always have to estimate one place past whatever the instrument shows. So if we think back to our ruler example down here, uh, the tick marks here go to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, right? We have the centimeter mark here, the centimeter mark here, and you can count the tick marks in between, and so we measure to the nearest tenth of a centimeter here. So we have to estimate when we're using this ruler, we have to estimate one place beyond the tenths place. So if we look at this black line, uh, we would get something like 1.9 here, and then we have to estimate one place beyond that. So we could see the black line goes a little past the 1.9 mark. We could say maybe this would be something like 1.92 or something along those lines. But the key is we need this 2 here because that's our estimated place beyond what the instrument shows. All right, so in light of that, uh, look at the uh, burette here on the right side of the screen and try and decide what you think the proper measurement would be to record for this volume of liquid here. All right, so pause the video and uh, come up with a measurement and come right back. So uh, with with the uh, burettes or graduated cylinders, it's important to remember that we have to measure from the bottom of the meniscus. So the meniscus is this part here, that this curved part of the liquid, right, where the uh, liquid sticks a bit to the uh, sides of the container and we end up with this little curvature here. So we always read from the bottom of the meniscus. So if we look carefully at this picture, the bottom of the meniscus is maybe right about here. So when we're measuring this, we have to keep in mind this uh, burette actually reads kind of upside down from how a graduated cylinder would read, right? Because we have 20 here and then we have 21 lower down. Uh, so with this burette, we are just past the 20 line and each of these is going to be 0 0.1 or a tenth of a milliliter or most likely working in milliliters in this case. So we could measure this as about 20.0. That would be our measurement, but we have to add one estimated place, right? So we could say this is 20.0, maybe 20.04, something like that, because we're a little bit in between 20.0, which would be this line, and 20.1, which would be this line. This was our actual line. So we're somewhere in between there. We could say 20.04, something like that. Okay, so with analog measurements, it's important to remember you always have to estimate one place beyond whatever you're directly shown by the instrument. Okay, with digital measurements, when we have a, a digital readout like this one here, we do not estimate at all. Okay, whatever the digital measurement shows us, that's our exact measurement. And this is going to come into play uh, in a minute here. So significant figures, or we call them sig figs for short, what are they? Well, they are all the digits in a number that we know or that have meaning. Okay, so this includes every digit that you actually measured, including those estimated digits if we're looking at an analog readout like this one with the ruler. So again, we said with this with this ruler here, we measured about 1.92, right? So all of these are measured digits. They would all be significant figures or sig figs. So this number here would have three sig figs.
because we have three digits here that were part of our measurement. Okay, so uh, we're going to work a little more with sig figs here. How do we count sig figs if we didn't measure the value? If we just uh, are looking at a number on the page and trying to decide how many sig figs does it have? All right, so the easiest way to count sig figs is to use the America rule. Okay, so the America rule, if the decimal place is present, all right, so if we have a decimal point here, which all of these numbers here have a decimal point, right? So if a decimal point is present, we start from the Pacific. And hopefully we're up to date on our geography, right? The Pacific is on the west coast of the United States. So we're going to come in and start counting from the left side. Okay, so we're going to come in from the left side of each of these numbers. And we're going to start with the first non-zero digit. So that just means any number besides zero. And we're going to include everything after that as being significant. Uh, as being significant meaning it's counting towards our sig figs. Okay, so here we have uh, a decimal place present, so we're going to start from the Pacific, and we're going to come in from the left side, and the first number we hit here is this 5, that's non-zero, so we're going to count it and count everything after. So this one would have four sig figs. So again, we came in from the left side, we hit 5, that was our first number, and then we count everything after that. Alright, down here with this second example, we do the same thing, come in from the left side, we hit 7, and we're going to count everything after that. So we have 7 plus these 5 zeros plus the 5, so that would give us 7 sig figs here. All right, if we count these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so all of these numbers, because we ran into a non-zero digit, this 7, we start counting everything after that, including the 7 itself. And our last example here, so we're going to come in from the left side, and this is a zero, all right, so we're not going to count this. We're coming in from the left side, and we're waiting for our first non-zero digit, and then we hit it here with four, all right? So because we have a decimal place present, right, all of these three numbers here have a decimal point. So that means we're going to start from the Pacific. If a decimal point is present, we start from the Pacific. So we come in from the left side here, and the first non-zero number that we hit was four. So we hit four, and then we count everything afterwards. So this one would also have seven sig figs. So we count the four, and then we have six numbers after the four. So that totals seven significant figures. Okay, so the second rule, the second part of the America rule, is what if we don't have a decimal place? So all those examples that we did before had a decimal place present. But if the decimal point is absent, or in other words, if there's no decimal point, right, all these numbers here have no decimal point in them, then you start from the Atlantic as you're counting towards sig figs. All right, so again, remembering our United States geography, the Atlantic is on the east coast of the United States, so we're going to come in from the right side as we're counting our sig figs. So again, we're going to start counting with the first non-zero digit and include everything after. So the rule is really the same as the first part here. Uh, except we're not going to count uh, from the left side this time, we're going to count from the right side. So if a decimal point is absent, we start from the Atlantic. So if we have no decimal point, you come in from the right side. So we can look at our first example here. We uh, don't have a decimal point in this number, so we're going to come in from the Atlantic. And the first non-zero number we hit is 6, and then there's nothing out here beyond the 6, right? So this number actually only has one sig fig. Uh, with our second uh, number down here, we come in from the right side. The first number we hit is 1. So that's going to be non-zero. It's going to count. And then everything after that. So all these zeros in here, they count. Because as soon as we hit a non-zero digit, we count everything after it. So we have 1, and then we have uh, 7 zeros here, and an 8. So that would make a total of 9 sig figs here, and you can again verify that if we count, we have three, six, nine total digits here, right, so this one would have nine sig figs. So again, even though we have all these zeros in here, as soon as we hit our first non-zero digit, which was the one here, we count everything afterwards. All right, and our last example here, same thing, we have no decimal place, so it's absent, we start from the Atlantic, the right side, we come in here, the first non-zero number we hit is three, and then we count everything afterwards. So 3 plus these other four numbers here, we 
give us a total of five sig figs on, the, on uh, this example here. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions on counting sig figs, uh, please shoot me an email or ask me a question uh, in class. Uh, it's very important that you understand how to count sig figs. Okay, so we can do some practice here uh, with scientific notation as well and see how do we count sig figs with scientific notation. It's actually really easy because with scientific notation, only the digits in the coefficient are significant. So the coefficient in scientific notation is this first number out here, not including the uh, times 10 to the whatever exponent you have. So all of those numbers in the coefficient count towards your sig figs. So whether it's zero or not, they all count no matter what. So in this example here, we have four digits in our coefficient, so this one would have four significant figures. Okay. So with scientific notation, it's much easier. You don't have to worry about any sort of America rule or which side you start from. It's just all the numbers in this coefficient here are significant no matter what, period. Uh, we don't count any of these numbers here. Only the ones in the coefficient, but all of them do count. Okay, so take a moment, pause the video, and do some practice here. Um, try and determine for each of these measurements here how many significant figures do each of them have. All right, so pause the video, try and come up with an answer for each of these, and then uh, I'll give you the answers. All right, so for these examples, here are the answers. Uh, if you got them all right, then great. You can kind of skip forward to the next slide. I'm going to go through here uh, using the America rule how we came across each of these answers. Uh, but like I said, if you got all of these uh, answers right and you think sick pigs are easy, you can skip forward uh, to the next slide in the video, maybe a minute or so, uh, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so for those of you who want to know how to uh, figure out the sig figs for each of these measurements, uh, we have to use the America rule. So again, uh, if the decimal place is absent, we start from the Atlantic. And if the decimal place is present, we start from the Pacific. So again, Pacific, this is the uh, United States, really crude United States. So again, if we're starting from the Pacific, we're coming in from the left side. If we're starting from the Atlantic, we're coming in from the right side. So this first measurement here, does it have a decimal place? No. So a decimal place is absent. We start from the Atlantic. We come in from this side. The first non-zero we hit is four. We count everything afterwards. So there's five total sig figs in this number. For the second example here, we do have a decimal place present. So we start from the Pacific. We're coming from this side. And the first non-zero number we hit is this one here. So we have one, seven, nine, six, that would be four total sig figs. This number here, we have a decimal place present. Come in from the left side, the Pacific, start counting. All of these numbers are gonna count because as soon as we hit four, everything afterwards is gonna count. So there's a total of eight significant digits in this number. Uh, the 55, what is this? 5,500,000. <laughs> This is uh, no decimal place present, right? So, or sorry, I should say that more clearly. Uh, decimal place is absent, right? There, there is no decimal place here. So the decimal place is absent. So we're gonna start from the Atlantic. We come in here and the first digit we hit is this five here. And we have a total of two digits there, the, the five and the next five over, right? And the final example here, we have a decimal place present. So we come in from the Pacific, the first side we hit or the first uh, non-zero digit that we hit is six, and we count all of the ones afterwards. So even this little zero at the end here, because we're coming in from the Pacific, we're counting everything afterwards. So this ends up being six total sig figs for this one. Okay. So the last thing with sig figs is, what do we do with regards to calculations, all right? So there's two separate rules here. One is for multiplication and division. So if you're multiplying or dividing numbers, the sig figs for your answer should match the measurement that you're multiplying or dividing that has the fewest total sig figs. Okay, so a few important things here. Whatever our answer is, we have to change the number of sig figs in our answer to match whatever measurement we had that had the fewest total sig figs. Right? So the first thing to do here is figure out 
what our answer is, and then we can count the sig figs that we used and figure out how many sig figs our answer has. All right, so the, for this first one here, 1.5 times 70, that would give us an answer of 105. So 105 is our answer, and we have to go back and think, how many sig figs can we have in our answer? Right now, this 105 has three sig figs. And we have to decide how many sig figs should our answer actually have. So looking at these two numbers, how many sig figs are in 1.5? We have two. How many sig figs are in 70? We have one. So whichever the fewest number of sig figs is, that's how many our answer should have. So one is our limiting number of sig figs here. All right, so we have one sig fig here. So our answer can only have one sig fig. So basically we just have to round our answer off to a number that only has one sig fig. So we don't have a decimal place here. So we come in from the Atlantic. And if we want only one sig fig, this one could be our only, only sig fig. So everything after that, we're just gonna round off. So our final answer here should actually be 100. So even though we got 105 when we did our multiplication, we know we can only have one sig fig because of this 70, which only has one sig fig. So we have to take our answer and round it to a number that has only one sig fig. So we could round this off to 100. For the next one here, if we do 10.1 divided by this long decimal here, then we should end up with uh, 3.8 seven seven eight four two six okay so this is this is our answer we are not going to use all of this though because again we have to count how many sig figs are in each of the uh, numbers here so here we have seven sig figs and here we have three so the lower number of sig figs here is three that limits what we can have in our answer so the sig figs that we would keep would be these ones here so when you're going to chop a number off, you want to look at the next number and see if we should round or not. So we're going to keep three sig figs here, and we want to look at the next number to see how we're going to round. So because this is a 7, we'll round this 7 up to 8. So our final answer here will be 3.88. Again, this has three sig figs, which is what we wanted based on uh, the limiting number, the fewest number of sig figs that we had in our multiplication or division in this case. Okay, so the last example here, if we do 11.8 times 3 divided by 5.4, that should give you an answer of 6.5555, five repeating, right? But we can throw some fives out there. Okay, so the same thing applies here. We want to look at our, our numbers that were multiplied or divided and count how many sig figs they have. So the sig figs you have here should be 3, 1, and two. So the lowest number of sig figs we have here is one. So that means our final answer can only have one sig fig. So one sig fig would be this six. We look at the next number afterwards and see how we should round. This is 0.5, and we got a bunch of fives after this, right? So the final answer here should actually be seven, just seven. So again, this has one sig fig, and that's how many we should have based on the fewest number of sig figs we have in our uh, and the numbers that we were multiplying or dividing. Okay, and the last thing here is what if we're doing addition and subtraction instead? Okay, so this is slightly different than our multiplication and division rule. The number of decimal places is what we're looking at. So, so our answer should have the same number of decimal places as whatever measurement that we were adding or subtracting that had the fewest number of decimal places. So with addition and subtraction, the key is, instead of looking at total sig figs, we're looking at decimal places and decimal places when we're comparing the numbers and our answer, okay? So we're only looking at the decimal places and not the total sig figs. So if we look at these examples here, if we add up 1.5 and 70.06, we would end up with 71.56, okay? So the key is here, we have to see how many decimal places do each of these numbers have. This one has two decimal places. This one has one decimal place. So the lowest number of decimal places in our answer would have been this one. So we have to have our final answer have only one decimal place. So again, one decimal place, 
we look one spot beyond to see how we should round, this is a six, so we should round up. So we should end up with 71.6 as our final answer here. Again, we want only one decimal place because that was the limiting amount, the, the fewest uh, number of decimal places we had in these two numbers. And then we round accordingly to chop our answer down to the right number of decimal places. For the second answer, or the second example here, if you 51.1 minus this big long decimal, you should end up with 47.38438. So again, we're looking at the number of decimal places. So this one has one decimal place, and the second number has six decimal places. So again, we're looking for the fewest number of decimal places, which would be one out of these two numbers. And then we want our answer to only have that same number of decimal places. So we're gonna chop it off at the three here in the tenths place, look one number beyond to see how we should round. So the eight would round this up to four, so we should have 47.4 as our final answer here. So again, we're looking at the number of decimal places. The fewest number of decimal places determines what our answer should have. One decimal place, we should also have one decimal place here, and then just check your rounding at the end. Okay, and the last example here, if we take the same numbers and now instead of multiplying and dividing, we're just going to add and subtract them, you should end up with 9.4 here as your answer. So we want to look at the number of decimal places that each of these has. This has one decimal place, this has zero decimal places, this has one decimal place. So the lowest number of decimal places here is zero, so we want our answer to have zero decimal places, which means we have to chop off that four. Uh, we would look to see if we should round this nine up or down four would mean we should round it down. So our final answer here should be nine, because again, that has no decimal places, which agrees with the fewest number of decimal places we had in our uh, numbers that we added and subtracted. All right, thanks for watching this video on SIGFIGS, and I'll see you in the next one.